What's going on everyone? Welcome back. Today's video is going to be a quick editing tutorial in Photoshop going over a focal length blending technique that I use in some of my photos uh, to enhance certain aspects or, or features that you might see like mountains or buttes or other cool prominent features that you want to make bolder and stand out while also having a cool foreground, whether it's mud cracks as is in this video or if it's wildflowers or something else you see in the foreground. Being able to combine the two of having something low uh, as well as something grand that you want to have in your image. So let's jump right in and I'll show you how to do it. All right, so here we have two different images. One, like I said, for the foreground. In this image, that's gonna be mud cracks as well as this butte that was also in frame, but I wanted to make more grand. When you were standing there, it was this towering butte that looked uh, really bold and, and really impressive. And then in a photo, when you have a wide angle, sometimes even with the distortion that might come with that lens, it's not quite uh, as prominent as you might like it to be in your final image. So what I did in the field was I used a 14 millimeter uh, shot of the mud cracks. Uh, it's actually a focus stack as well. Not gonna dive into that in this video. Then the focal length blended part of that, the butte itself is shot at I think 24 millimeters or close to it. So right now we, in this frame, this is the butte photo. Uh, and then you can see these are the mud cracks. Um, the mud cracks, like I said, are focus stacked, so they're all sharp. Um, and then the butte is a little bit larger to enhance the dramaticness of that. Dramaticness. Not sure if that's a word. Um, all right, so now we're gonna blend these two images together. I'm going to go over here to add layer mask. Click that. We're gonna be in the brush mode. Make sure that it is selected to be black. This will hide certain aspects of this layer, the focal length blend layer. And we're just gonna start painting this back. So now we can see those mud cracks. And for the sake of this video, I'm not gonna make it Perfect, just gonna give you the gist of how to do this. So now you can see this is already coming together pretty nicely. Next, to actually make the contracts and the exposure um, match, we are going to click the add adjustment layer, go over to curves, hold option, and then click that line in between those two layers. And those will link the two of them so that everything I do here will only be done to this specific layer. So I'm just going to bring it up to, right there is actually pretty good. It blended that pretty nicely. Now um, I will do more um, to blend these two images together and to, to make it a final image that I'm happy with. But that essentially is the gist of the actual focal length blend. You can see that there is a line, the sky is a little wonky there. Uh, that is because the sky that is in this focal length blend is the one that's showing through, so it's not actually going to the top. So let's actually go over the steps to separate the sky uh, from the foreground, whether or not you're doing a focal length blend and a composite, uh, whether it's a blue hour blend uh, for some nightscapes, um, or if it's just a little bit time, maybe you got your focal length blend maybe 30 minutes apart and the sky completely changed. So let's go over how we do that. First and foremost, I want to group these two layers. It allows for future editing. If you want to go over it again or make adjustments, it's just easier when you have a lot of layers. It can get confusing, but if you label them appropriately, uh, then you can then go back and adjust things um, pretty quickly, which is great. So when we select these two, do Command G, which will group them. And I'm going to name this Focal Length Blend Group. And now make sure that this is selected because we're gonna be selecting the sky from here and then applying it to this group. So go over to quick selection tool. Just quickly paint that. All right, so now that we're in selected mask, uh, it often doesn't select for things like foliage or bushes or uh, some of those finer details very well. So we go into selected mask and clean that up a little bit. So you, zooming in, you can see that some of these brushes and the plants in the foreground are uh, not selected very well. I'm just gonna speed through this really quickly for the sake of this edit, um, but you basically just go over and paint uh, along the edge.
All right, now that everything's selected, we'll press OK. Make sure that you go back to this group. Click the uh, add layer mask. We're just gonna do a command I to that so it inverts it. And you can now see there's some issues here with the uh, with the, the below layer actually showing through. That's just how this was aligned and everything. So I'm going to actually apply this mask to the mud cracks as well. I have a sky underneath it uh, that I actually used in my edit. So we'll click on that. Now, if you zoom in, there are certainly some issues along the skyline. Again, that is a video for a future date on how to blend and composite images a little bit better, as well as some dodging and burning that I would do to this foreground um, to make it overall a image that I'm happy with. Right now, this is just the start of the image, um, but so far you can see the before and after. So this would be the before of the total shot, and then that is it afterwards. So. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below and I'll get back to them as soon as I can. Uh, if you like the video, please do drop a like. And if you're not subscribed already, please do that as well. It really helps me out. And it'll allow you to see future videos uh, and tutorials that I come out with. So thanks so much for tuning in and we'll see you in the next one.